Hello Capricorn, welcome back to the channel and welcome to your 2025 Astro Clock. I'm delighted you're here and I'm so happy to be doing another Astro Clock. I decided to stick with them, I had a thought about it and they're quite popular and unique so I figured let's continue doing an Astro Clock this year. If you're new to this Capricorn, well first of all welcome, I'm Leila the Lenormand Reader and I use this amazing Lenormand deck. The Astro Clock is an amazing spread for an annual forecast and as you'll see it's a big spread that uses all 30 36 cards of the deck. We're going to divide them up into 12 groups of three cards. Uh, the Lenormand deck is made up of 36 cards, so it divides up nicely. And so all the cards are on the table. All the good cards are the challenging cards, all of the neutral cards. So let's go ahead and read your Astro Clock. Let's deal out these cards and see what 2025 has in store for you, Capricorn. I hope you're excited about this. I certainly am. Let's find out. Okay Capricorn, here is your Astro Clock. As you can see, it's a big spread. We've got all the cards on the table and we've got them divided into 12 groups of three cards. So each of the groups represents a month of the year. And you might have noticed that I start dealing the cards at midnight, but I actually start reading at one o'clock. So this is January here and I go around the Astro Clock clockwise all the way up to December. And before getting into the month to month reading of the Astro Clock, I like to get an overview of it and to sort of orient myself and find the main cards like the strongly positive cards, the challenging cards, uh, work cards, money cards, people cards and things like that. I like to uh, get a bird's eye view of the Astro Clock first. We've got the star and whip together. This is going to help um, alleviate and lighten the whip. Uh, we've got definitely an ending happening here. We've got the lovely key and then the lovely flowers. This lovely card also helps uh, overcome the clouds and actually the key can also help overcome the fox because the fox can be a bit challenging at times. Here we have people, uh, we have the woman with the garden and the dog and rider and each of these four cards are about people, especially the dog and woman. And we also have the man um, on the after September in October. We do have the ring earlier, but it does come with a coffin, which can be the end of a relationship. So that's really interesting. It sounds like you end a commitment or a relationship here and then later on, there is a more, um, a more social element at play. We've got the fish, which is the card of money with the letter and book. This can be some important news with it. And this is a really lovely um, month here in December with the beautiful sun and clover and cross. So it looks like things are happening sort of um, all throughout the year, but we're, we're going to do the detailed reading of the month to month and then we'll recap and see if there are some you know special areas with uh, special things happening in there. So starting with January Capricorn we have the mountain star and whip. Now the mountain and whip can point to an obstacle uh, but the star is very much a healing card and I think here Capricorn that you'll be able to break free um, the whip can be challenging, but the star is definitely healing and relieving. The mountain can be a blockage card. So with the, ma with the whip, you're able to break through that and the star certainly uh, brings um, some very good messages here. The mountain is sometimes associated with travel or a place abroad. And notice that we have the ship in February. So perhaps you were abroad or you had a connection with a certain place abroad. And then with the ship, um, here you could be, and the coffin especially, you could be moving from it. So it's possible that the two months here are connected. Of course they don't have to be. Now the ring with the coffin and ship points to the end of a relationship and the end of this connection and moving on into a new direction or just leaving uh, because we see the ship on the other side of the coffin. Um, so this can point to the end of a commitment, end of an involvement or even a relationship. Here we have the child, which points to a new beginning. So it's nice to see these cards in this order because they're sort of building up on each other. And with the moon, it points to a new phase. With the house, it can point to a new home or a new space or a new workplace, depending on what the house represents. So this can be quite a turning point here. So we see the new beginning, the ending and the new beginning here. So I think there are some big changes happening um, in the beginning of the year. And it sounds like these changes 
are concentrated here, but we also are going to pick out September and October for changes. Moving on to April, we have the beautiful key. The key is a card of success and unlocking, and it is um, a card of opportunity and really good potential. It's also a card of success. And with the heart, I think you're happy uh, here. Now the fox is uh, can be a tricky card. It can represent self-interested or outright selfish people. Um, but um, I mean, I, I don't really see it this way in, the, in this triplet. The fox is also a card of work. So with the heart and key, you could land a great, great job or a good opportunity, whether it's job related or not. In terms of the more challenging aspects of the fox uh, with the heart, it can point to someone who is half-hearted. So someone who is not really genuine. Now, if that's the case, and I don't really think it is, but if it is the case, with the key, you're able to figure that out and you're able to manage the relationship. So I don't think it gets to you. I don't think it affects you. I think you have, um, you know, you're smart and you're intelligent and you see through this. So I don't really think it affects you. Uh, it can also be uh, a, a suggestion to be smart with people, to manage people with diplomacy and tact. And that's a way to get what you want as well. So you can also use the clever side of the fox to your advantage, Capricorn. Now in May, we have the bear, flowers, and clouds. And the clouds can be a bit of a challenging card. Um, it tends to suggest confusion and cloudiness. And it, so it's, it's, um, we see it at the end of the line, which can sort of affect the brighter aspects of the bear and flowers. The bear and flowers is a lot of strength and empowerment and a sense of um, uh, enthusiasm. But I think the clouds can sort of temper your enthusiasm and momentum a bit. At the same time, these are really great cards to help you deal with anything that comes your way. Also focus on being positive uh, this month, Capricorn. Now, June, we have some very stable and solid cards. We have the tower, anchor, and tree. And these can suggest a long-term, stable situation. There is a sense of security, of um, steadiness, consistency. And it's also a combination that asks you to stick with the situation um, because it is going to grow and evolve. So if it builds on the previous cards, and actually on this card here, um, you know, we, we suggested that you could be in for a new project. Maybe here you're still getting to know the people, maybe your manager with the, with the bear and the tower anchor entry advise you to stick around, to stick with what you're doing over the longer term so that you see it through. So these are some really stable and solid cards that create a, a great sense of foundation in your life. So focus on in June on building that foundation. Now, July, we have people cards. We have the woman and garden and the mouse. The mouse is not so great in relationships. It can point to lack of trust often and, um, you know, people who are not, you know, they're not, they're not really trustworthy. They can also be energy vampires, um, naysayers and people like that. And we see it with the garden and woman. So it can refer to specifically this woman or maybe to more people. So this could be a time when maybe you're, just getting annoyed with some people or some issues come up in, a, in an environment. Now, what environment this is, is pretty flexible. And when we get to the monthly forecast throughout the year, we'll dive more deeply into each of these um, car, uh, groups of car, three card triplets, I mean. And um, so this environment can be in your social life, in your personal life. It could be something at work or maybe another situation or environment that you're part of. Now, the dog with the rider and Lily is supportive for a relationship. They're generally neutral cards, um, but um, uh, it, it does point to progress and steadiness in a relationship. The Lily can be a card of career, so it can refer to professional relationships. And with the dog and rider, there is progress. So this can mean... Um, you know, following up with people, doing what you need to do with others. It's great for living up to your responsibilities and getting things done. It's also good for connecting with people more generally and for networking with others uh, in your in your environment here. So these are these are people cards um, in these two months here. Whereas earlier, I think it was it was more focused on your work, your changes, the new beginning here. 
Now, the snake with the scythe and bird is actually a challenging combination. The scythe and snake can point to uh, when the snake is aggressive. So the snake is normally uh, quiet and just observant, but with the scythe, it can sort of attack, if you like. And with the bird, there can be a tough conversation. This can be a separation. It could be a breakup. It could be a release of sorts. I'm not seeing the argument cards. It's normally the whip, but there still can be a difficult exchange. Um, certainly with the scythe in the middle, uh, it points to a separation of sorts. The snake is also a card of turning away. And we do see the road with uh, in the next month, which is often a card of uh, moving away. So this can be also a bit of a, a challenging month and a turning point as well because the scythe tends to bring separations and sharp changes. Now the man with the stork and road is very much a card of moves and changes and the man is um, can represent just about anyone just like the woman. Usually the man and woman represent people of significance in your life. The stork and road is very much about moves and changes and so this man could be leaving or moving and it can build on the previous cards or perhaps the opposite happens um, and you could meet someone or get together with someone or do things with a person. And the reason it can sort of go both ways is because the road can be shifty in this way. It could either be coming or going. And of course, when we are, uh, when we'll do the forecast, um, that's the month of October, a while off from now, we'll get into these cards. Now the ship and the letter and book, um, uh, that's the fish, I mean, the fish is a card of money, usually. It's also great for work and business and prosperity in general. Um, the letter and book can be some important news that comes through. So this can be some news that affects your money it affects your prosperity or your business or your job uh, or other practical areas of your life. I have to say, Capricorn, that from these cards, we don't see if this is bright or not so bright or what is happening uh, with this. So again, we'll get into the monthly forecast. But December is a very beautiful month. We have the sun, clover and cross. The sun and clover are very bright cards. In fact, they're two of the happiest cards of the deck. So obviously we're looking at wish fulfillment, happiness, a sense of well-being overall, and healing. And cross can, can sometimes point to challenges, uh, but I don't think with these cards. Instead, it's more about a sense of destiny, things that are meant to be, and being in alignment uh, with your path. It can bring up some important decisions, uh, so maybe that's happening, but certainly with the sun and clover, you're going to make some, some pretty good decisions for yourself, Capricorn. So overall, it was sort of my feeling that things are happening sort of throughout the year. We do have some demarks, though. Uh, here we see the changes and the new beginning. I think this is going to be really marked. And then here we see uh, some positive things happening for you. I think mostly work-related or in terms of your daily routine. Um, and the idea is really to focus on the long term and to build something solid. Between July and August, we have a people element that comes into play. And I think there is a fallout and we see it all the way up to September and then possibly into um, October where either there is a, a move or there is a, a pickup with someone else. So things moving forward with another person as opposed to the changes that we see here. Uh, these are lovely months, uh, especially the sun and clover and the fish money card appears in this area. So you wrap up the year actually on a really nice note with these beautiful sun, clover, and cross cards. So lovely, lovely astro clock. I think that uh, there aren't that many challenges. Normally we see two to three challenge months in an astro clock. For your part, Capricorn, we have the whip with the star, but the combination really helps overcome the whip to a decent extent. We have the clouds here, but certainly the flowers helps it and the fox and the key helps it. So in fact, the fox might not be a challenge card at all. I think it's with people that we see mainly the, the challenges. We have the mouse garden and woman. And again, this is not very dramatic, but if these cards affect a relationship, then they can be pretty dramatic. Um, and they, they really bring a, a sharp change. 
and uh, so here we see a focus with people. Maybe September is not directly aff affecting the people cards here. It can, um, but we see the people cards on the second half of the astro clock. Earlier we have these changes, so it sounds like you're working on yourself the first part of the year, and then later it's more about you with other people and wrapping up on a really pretty note here. So let me know what you make of these ideas, Capricorn. I certainly look forward to your thoughts and your feedback. If you're building up your vision for 2025, I'd love your thoughts and I'd love to know how uh, these cards are resonating with your vision. It'd be really exciting to see uh, you know, what you make of it. So thank you for tuning in. And I also wanna say thank you for being with me throughout the year. I hope you'll continue. Like I said, we will pick up these uh, triplets and use them for our monthly forecasts and build on them for more details. So I hope you'll stick around with that, for that, and also for the weeklies and other readings we'll be doing. Thanks again, Capricorn. Very best of luck with 2025. And until next time, take very good care of yourself.